Hello everyone, I wanted to apologize before this video starts about uh, my voice being like interfering with the game audio as in I forgot to edit the the balance between game audio and my voice so yeah I hope you still enjoyed the video and if you do don't forget to drop a like and subscribe for more of these and yeah sit back relax and enjoy it I don't know how to start the video fuck it this is gonna be intro I can keep up with this Press X to stun. Which one is X? I'm gonna take a picture of my controller and I'm gonna do like put it in, in the video like I don't have X. Wait, where, where the fuck is camera? Picture. Let's oh, that one. Let's start. New game. Uh Continue. Once upon a time, the infamous rover Renardo plundered the floating isles. Then his mother called him to her deathbed. Swear to me that you won't die on the Galapus. She rasped. Reluctantly, he swore. And he whiled away his days at home with music, cards, and wine. But the Emperor had changed. He'd been good once. A shy, almost humble toad. He'd built universities. Then people started whispering about mass graves in the woods. Midnight rituals, victims screaming. The Imperial Ravens would round up entire villages, and no one ever returned. The Ravens had come to Ubar scouting for ancient books said to be of great power. But the librarians had hidden the books, so they'd burnt the librarians. The citizens, outraged, had driven them off. The ravens had come back with dropships. The kid had fled with one of those books. He was brave and dumb and wanted to join the rebellion. And Bernardo had promised his mother he'd protect him. looking down watching his city burn sorry kid Renato told the kid look if we give them the book they leave you alone my mother died for this book I promised her I'd protect you oh damn it the kid had run off with the book of course so Renato had to run after him so I have to get the kid The, book. the two ravens were staring at the kid like he was their dinner, which probably was what was in their tiny brains. Hey, Renato said. They cocked their heads at him. Pick on someone as ugly as you. Wait, that didn't come out right. For the Emperor! The ravens cawed and rushed at him. dropship flew overhead. He hoped they hadn't noticed him. The kid. Time to hold the crab. Hold to grab. Press? Or, I don't know. Is that right? Just look at the direction. Oh, right. 
the gate of heroes. Someone's idea of a joke. What? Making the Skyship Docks a gated community. No. Nice. You needed a hero's sword to open it. And the kid was on the other side of the gate. Who let you through? The Promise me you'll take the book to the rebels. Or I'm gonna steal your ship. I'm not taking the damn book anywhere. And neither are you. Try and stop me, laughed the kid. I bet you don't even have a hero sword. And with that, the kid hopped away. Well, had to hand it to the kid. Dick. He was an idiot, but he had guts. Where was Renato going to get a hero sword? Or an wind essence? Perfect. A hero sword. Q E D. This is what he got for settling down and finding people to care about. The kid's mum had been a swell cook and she'd laughed at Renato's jokes, even though he didn't know he'd made one. And then the ravens had come to burn her. And she'd made him promise to protect the kid. But she never told him where the book was, just the kid. He came up to a ledge. It was too far to jump. There'd been a bridge here before, hadn't there? And there was Peter, giggling at him. How'd you get across? He asked the kid. Where'd you find a hook? I hopped, said the kid. White-ass kid. Hey, look out behind you. Cute, said Renato. Ah, oh, ravens. Time to talk some sense into the kid. Just hook his way across the ledge and chase the kid down. Thing was, he hadn't used his hook since he'd retired. He'd done it. Maybe if he meditated at that altar there, he'd remember his old skills. It was starting to come back to him. Something you never completely forgot, like how to freeze time when attacking. The more he fought, the more he'd probably remember. The same, the same. And there was the Farfarer. She was the fastest ship he'd ever known. She could do the Kestra run in 12 furlongs. Oh, so the salesman told him. And something told him the kid was about to walk into an ambush. Stop! He shouted. I'm not giving you the book! Shouted the kid and took off. No! Oh, no! Peter! The kid ran for it. And a goblin nailed him with its eyes. There uh, he goes. There he goes again. <laughs> the book was unburned. Next to it were the buckles from the kid's shoes. One kid the with kid a sized book. pile of ashes. He ran off Damn it. and Why got turned into a pile. And told the kid he'd take the book to the rebels. I mean, the kid would be alive dumb. now. Really pissed off and At betrayed, least but the story alive. Was told. Oh, damn it. Renato picked up the book. He couldn't let the Empire have it now. He was going to have to get it out of there. <sighs> He'd be a wanted man. Probably have to join the rebellion just to have a place to dock. Well, he'd hated home life anyway. Anyway, maybe he should open it and find out. I All that don't. had been years ago. How many? The war was a blur. And now three Raven scout ships were chasing it. 
Proud of you, running right? rebel! Clawed the raven captain over the loud hailer. <laughs> Renato could see them cranking up their catapults. Just going out for milk? Renato yelled back. Where can you run? <laughs> Laughed the raven horribly. Far behind him, another city was burning. The dark cloud above its island was thousands of Imperial ships. The fleet was doing a thorough job. Take us to the rebel base, and we'll spare your life! It cawed. The entire jury-rigged rebel fleet was only a few islands to the east. Beyond that were only the pillars of heaven, a sea of endless blood-colored tornadoes. The rebellion was out of time, unless Renardo could bring a game-changer. Maybe he could. Renardo had found out where he could find the pieces of the Sky Ripper. The legendary weapon that had exiled the lost gods. That's Surely nice a legendary weapon could win the final battle. On the other hand, his old friend Lapino had sent Renato a desperate message saying he had a brilliant scheme to save the rebellion. If Renato could only rescue him, Renato dived the farfarer towards the abyss. As he felt the heat of the jet stream, the raven ships peeled off, not stable enough to follow him down there. Now it was time to choose. Lapino or the Sky Ripper. I mean he is old friend though. He can make a new old friends. The rebellion was out of time and Leonardo needed a game changer. Maybe the Lapino wasn't Apparently, the mad rabbit had sold a Pegasus that he did not exactly own. Lapino always wiggled out of trouble, given time. But he was out of time. The Ravens had figured out that Lapino was a rebel spy. If the fleet reached him first, they'd string him up for that. Never mind the winged horse. What? Lapino what? had apparently managed to confuse the judge by arguing that he hadn't actually stolen a winged horse. He'd only sold it. But yeah. wait, where was the prison? The village was empty. Had, had everybody fled the ravens? Renato's <laughs> blood was up. He just needed to smash something. Storyteller said that Lapino was a rebel spy. But what if there were stickers a, all over the platform like, for really hot lady horses? He's a spy for reb rebels, but he works for the the toad. Hmm? Yeah, the other two is like the, the spy. Had spy. Taken the town. Renato had seen villages emptied like this. All the people taken away to be sacrificed in the Emperor's secret rituals. Renato hoped the people were just hiding.
Titans were landing everywhere. The advance guard. He better get moving. If they got to Lupino first, they'd eat him for breakfast. Or a snack. Ravens weren't picky. If they got hungry, they sometimes forgot to interrogate their prisoners. Even top spies like Lupino. Where had the mad rabbit got to? Chest that shiny deserve to be opened. Hmm? Starting to come back to him. Something you never completely forgot. Like how to freeze time when attacking. Mm. The more he fought, the more he'd probably remember. Sir. You want carbonate or something? Like the lemonade? <laughs> Renato felt a chill run down his back. Oh, possibly a flea. Ooh. Ooh. The graveyard. and bloody Renato finally like reached amount. Lupino like the rabbit was practicing his shuffle Renato recognized the cards it was Lupino's Literally. favorite deck oh, I thought you were in danger I am hey, the ravens are coming or oh, the prison yeah. thing sure. right yeah we see this guard owed me 52 dollars so we made out. a deal they're very reasonable people actually for weasels now I got a brilliant plan to kidnap Zenobia we Captures an Obia. <laughs> like he's find out what she knows. With some of and that's the whole war right there. Easy peasy, oh, lemon fuck. squeezy. Capture the Emperor's greatest general, who also happened to be a deadly sorcerer and oh, his only daughter. That would be worth it. On the other hand, he could still get to the core of the Sky Ripper, even if he couldn't get the whole thing. It must have great power. To make the Sky River, the transcendent emperor had wrapped an armature around the eye of a god. Renardo had already let I'm that armature slip this, away uh, to save Lapino's life. I want to get in the Sky But River. even its core, the eye torn from a god, surely they could fashion a great weapon from that. The core of the Sky Ripper? Lapino was excited. That's an actual thing that we can just go and get. You've been busy. He sure had. Renato told him all the things he'd been up to. <laughs> Soon they got to talking about old times, about wages they'd won and lost, and scrapes they'd barely got out of. Next thing you know, it was half good to be back with his friends. Renato grinned. He had a very good feeling about this. It's beautiful here, thought Renato. He was thrilled to be back with his old war buddy. He'd missed the mad rabbit, but something was not quite right. What? Oh. And this hmm. is why heroes are called dashing. 
Renato thought. See? Dashing? Get it? Oh, uh, it's not showing you blue light because it's not connected to what thing. What? Huh. Good. I jumped into a well. And you wanna see how how this looks well from inside? It's another kid. With the grass and shit and light. Wow. Wow. Zoom. I'm gonna jump in there. No, I can't. Okay. Sorry, mustache, thought Renato. Wind distance. Oh, yeah. There was something sour in the air. Like the earth had ruptured over something that had been fermenting for a very long time. None? I mean, if you have Wi-Fi, then that doesn't really matter if you have blue light or not. You know? Renato felt wrong hmm. all over. He could feel an almost palpable sickness in the air. And if the land could have tumors, hmm. they would look like these monstrous crystals. The forest was quieter than it had been. There were insects. A few birds. If he didn't cat the ravens. Bernardo smelled sick animals and dying ones. No help agents. I'm getting a bad feeling about this. Bernardo thought. Maybe Lafina was right. Maybe he should have kidnapped Zenobia instead of coming here. I mean, I can give you my uh, phone as um, USB. But I remember her up with 5,000 something. Like 5,000 to 100 something. Hell yeah, another level. Oh boy. As he held the radiant icosahedron, Bernardo felt queasy. Like dozens of tiny worms were nibbling his insides. It wasn't healthy to be so close to the eye of a god. How could he use it? He could take it to the observatory. The scientists there could tell him how to harness its ancient power. But honestly, Renato ached to get away from it. He brought the core back with him to the Farfarer. But honestly, Renato ached to be rid of it. Tell you what, said Lupino. I'll take it to the observatory. You attack the Imperial Outpost. The Imperial Outpost was a vital communications node. Taking it could shatter the Empire's ability to coordinate. And it would be full of secret plans and maps and maybe even rebel prisoners. It was a good target for a hero like Renardo. But what if Lupino got the core and then broke it or lost it or worse? Was Renato ready to take that risk? Maybe it was better if he brought the core to the scientists himself. Mm. Well, let's bring the Pino the core to scientists. touchy rabbit. Renato knew that. You're brave, I know, Renato said. But this is what I was hired to do. At least let me run ahead and warn the scientists you're coming. So. Lepino well, was intent was on being a hero, five just like him. Like, War made different. sensible men crazy for glory, and Lepino had never been sensible. But what was the harm? 
Lapino might well trip over a hornet's nest of ravens. But that was better than ravens lying in ambush, wasn't it? They finished the trip to the Nexus in silence. Something. Bernardo had no sooner because rescued his friend than he was putting four, him back five in something, danger. Like two All something. right. Or five, four, finally said as they landed. Something. Go. <laughs> and are you okay? As Renato watched the Pino vanish on the horizon, he could feel nausea building in him. He felt ill. Did his knees really be aching this much? But how could he have handed the core off to the Pino? That was a recipe for disaster. You want the thing? Who needed bridges anyway? Also, uh, also money does its wonders, baby. Just agree to disagree, said Renato. No? <laughs> Renato felt worse. All his joints were aching now. He'd been through beatings that felt better than this. So the core had a kind of poison that could harm you without even touching you. That's new. Well, it had power. The rebellion needed something with power. And how was this any worse than a sword wound? Well, a death by sword was sudden and fair. This was just squalid. A piecemeal death, like old age. a little better. Renato had given up in the Skyripper's armature to save his friend Lupino. But without its armature, Skyripper's core was a deadly poison. sharpened it.
hated war. The way they stayed back and loved pain and death from a distance. Cowards. Really dangerous, effective cowards. <laughs> Don't look down. The observatory was a burning hulk. Dead scientists everywhere. Bernardo found the mad rabbit cowering under a desk. The ravens, they must have known we were coming, said Lapino. Hmm. How did you? Well, you see, I was doing a card trick with my lucky deck, and I kind of bobbled the card, so I went under the desk to gather them up, and boom! I guess we'll have to take the car straight to the secret base. The secret rebel base. Yes. Hmm. They had engineers there. But wait. Calaveras, the sage in the mountains. Maybe he would know what to do with the naked core. Hmm. I'm going over there. The sage. The core was killing him. He needed help. The sage Calaveras had given them the maps to find the armature and the core. If anyone knew the true name of the Transcendent Emperor, if anyone knew how to assemble the Sky Ripper, Calveras did. If anyone could heal Renardo and render the core safe, at least to its bearer, surely it was he. Old Smarter Stoat. The base of the mountain was the only safe place for a landing. Oh, yeah. You would have to continue on foot, muscles aching. Calaveras was a scholar, not a doctor. Could he really save Renardo from the poison radiating from the lost god's eye he was so recklessly carrying? fun way to die even if he survived no one would write ballads about the fox whose knees ached forever would they not unless he paid for it he hated paying for publicity hmm. hero wall hero sword ice wall ice cube
was chilling walking through the living mountains. There was always noise up ahead. Insects, birds, the croak and flutter of ravens arranging ambushes. But close by, there was only the breeze and the trickle of melting snow. As if every living thing was holding its breath for his poisonous burden to move on. I think I accidentally went the way I needed to go. Okay, I wanted to explore stuff, but... Yeah. I found I just skipped. Smashing things was fun. I mean, I just find it fun, but most of the time it's just foul potions. I have enemies. Like shorts. People still use doorknobs. Time was running out for the rebellion. They might already be fighting the Imperial fleet. Everything hinged on Calaveras' ability to turn an exiled god's eye into something deadly. The core, splendid, croaked Calaveras. Where's the armature? Right, I was kind of hoping you wouldn't need it. <laughs> no, I don't. It's just a professional interest. We've got much better prismatics than the old TE ever did. So Calaveras was an arcane engineer. He fussed at the core all day. He wrapped it with silver chains, and in front of it, he placed a huge round ruby so that it looked like a monstrous floating eye. Ah, so... What is it? Yeah, I call it the Oculum. It's my very first death ray. And it won't poison me? Oh, <laughs> no, 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 it's completely safe now. Anything I should watch out for? Yeah, tr try to avoid pointing at any mirrors. As he loaded <laughs> the Oculum onto the Farfarer, hey. Bernardo was a little concerned about Calaveras. People who were utterly sure of themselves, he had found, were either experts or horribly wrong. Or both. But Renardo only needed to fire the oculum once. He only needed to destroy one ship. The Emperor's ship. And the war was over. Renardo plunged into the Imperial fleet. He felt the oculum humming. He no longer felt sick. This was gonna be fun. Or at least, it was going to be over. Will it? Renato resisted the temptation to fire the oculum until the time came. He could sense its arcane energies yearning to escape the sage's wrappings. But it wasn't eating him alive. So that was a plus. He felt good about himself. He'd saved a friend, he'd helped the rebels. He'd relied on himself, but he'd listened to others. He felt like the right sort of hero. Wise, yet decisive. Calaveras had been so sure it would work. Maybe he could fire it just a few times. No harm in that. But only when he absolutely needed to. That was awesome! Hell. Enormous 
Red Ball. Was up to the Ravens. It was definitely easier to fight inanimate objects. Getting tired. The core was no longer eating at him, but he still felt weak. His stamina was shot. But he had the oculum. When the ravens swarmed him, it was sometimes fire its death ray. It seemed to be warming up too, firing more and more often. Maybe he should let it cool off. He decided to stop using it entirely. Building these platforms was so expensive, they'd run out of budget for guardrails. down, he thought. The oculum was still hot to the touch. He almost thought it was getting even hotter. Well, that was ridiculous, of course. Anyway, he'd only to fire it one more time, and then he could chuck the whole contraption into the abyss. And the Emperor's ship was now in range. Bernardo squinted. He could make out the line of ravens protecting the ship. Zenobia in front, conjuring. And on the deck, yes. 
That was his Imperial Majesty, pacing in his golden armor. Renardo lined up his shot and fired. Caught in the beam, the ship burst into flames. The ravens and Zenobia exploded. The Emperor, too, exploded. Renardo waited for the beam to stop, but it only got brighter and the oculum hotter. Frantic, Renardo pulled the oculum towards the abyss. The ruby burst into flames. The shiny metal casing glowed, then melted. That was good. Uh. Now the core could cool off, right? Renardo ran. The blast incinerated him instantly, along with both fleets. The shockwave could be felt across all Erda. That winter, with neither empire nor rebels to rule them, the island slid into banditry. And so began the second age of darkness. Absolutely died. Okay, that was weird. He could have sworn he just died. Instead, he was on the Farfarer, sailing away from Ubar. And it was still burning. He'd fled burning Ubar years ago, hadn't he? And now he was back there. Had all those years fighting the Empire been nothing but a vision into the future? A useful vision, if it was true. He learned something. The core was powerful, but dangerous if used improperly. Nice. So, I guess... This be the end. This is gonna be the end of the video. I'm gonna make uh, every single like story a video, which is yeah. So thank thank you everyone for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please make sure to drop a like, and if you want to see more of these like 23 uh, videos more. Make sure to subscribe and turn on those post notifications for uh, more upcoming videos. And this is uh, this was Lou Patronic with you, and see you in the next video. Peace.